Adarnya Dr. Chinmay Bai and all members of the Gayatri Parivar, Namaste. It is a pleasure and a privilege to be invited to share my perspectives and reflections on humanity and its future seen from the lens of the present. Until recently, we had a profoundly different sense of ourselves, our communities, our systems of production, and our future. For many of us in the developed world, what has changed most immediately is spatial. In only a short few weeks, our future has become very uncertain. We have stayed home for those of us that have a home and away from contact with others. We have withdrawn from schools, workplaces, conferences, vacations, gyms, errands, bars, clubs, churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, from the hustle and the bustle of everyday life. Our hospitals are overwhelmed. Our loved ones are dying alone. Our funerals are empty experiences and the global economy has suffered a severe setback. In this era, we have learned a whole new lexicon, such as triaging, social distancing, self-isolation. I have never ever seen a time like this. I have never experienced a phenomena where we are having to stay apart in order to come together. The philosopher mystic Simone Weil once wrote to a faraway friend, let us love this distance, which is thoroughly woven with friendship, since those who do not love each other are not separated. We have withdrawn from one another to protect each other. We have never so eagerly awaited a positive result for a disease. Such paradoxes. When I first experienced the impact of the coronavirus from my home city of London, I wasn't sure what to make of it. On the one hand, during some days it felt, and it still feels like we are at war, with an erstwhile enemy that is suddenly everywhere and nowhere, to be felt but not to be seen. A war without missiles and grenades, a war without human soldiers, a war without borders. The army in this war is without mercy. It is without any compassion. It is indiscriminate. It has no respect for children, women, or places of worship. This army is not interested in the spoils of war. It is not even interested in religious, ethnic, or ideology. It is only ambition has nothing to do with racial superiority. It is an invisible, fleet-footed, and ruthlessly effective army. Its only agenda is a harvest of death. It is only satiated after turning the world into one big death field. Its capacity to achieve its aim is never in doubt. Without any movement of hardware and assets, it has a base in almost every country of the world. Its movement is not governed by any war convention or protocol. In short, this army is a law unto itself. All our defenses and nuclear capabilities through which we threaten states and citizens are of no use against this enemy. This war machine is the coronavirus, otherwise known as COVID-19. On the other hand, during other days, it feels like that I am in a storm at sea, which I'm hoping will pass quickly, but it is turned out to be a long storm with very rough seas. In the storm, I'm on a boat, but I see many other boats, some bigger than mine, but many the size of a canoe, which are sure to capsize if not rescued. 
the vista of this vast sea that I see from my window is a beautiful but a deeply thought-provoking kaleidoscope where for some quarantine is optimal, a moment of reflection, of reconnection, easy in flip-flops with continuous refreshment. For others, it is a desperate crisis. For some, it is facing loneliness, and for others, it's peace, rest time, vacation. For some, it is torture. How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to feed my family? Yet others have been concerned about a special brand of chocolate for Easter. Some are in their home office. Others are looking through trash in order to survive. Some have experienced the near death of the virus. Some have already lost someone from it. Some are not sure whether their loved ones are going to make it. And others don't even believe this is so big a deal. Some who are well in health and confident of their immunity may end up experiencing it. And others who believe that they are infallible are sure to be blown away if or when this hits them or someone they know. So friends, I'm realizing that while we may be in the same storm, we are definitely not on the same boat. We are going through a time when our perceptions and needs are completely different and each one of us will eventually emerge in his own way from this storm. Some with a tan from their pool, others with scars on their soul. It's very important to see and listen beyond what is seen and heard at first glance, not just looking and hearing, but much more than that. It is proper seeing and proper listening. I'm learning in this experience not to underestimate the pain of others if I do not feel it. I'm learning not to judge the good life of the one, nor condemn the bad life of the other. I'm learning not to be a judge of the one who lacks, as well as the one who exceeds him. I'm seeing how people leave supermarket shelves empty, buying food, masks and disinfectants compulsively. I'm seeing acts of racism and discrimination against certain collectives, fearing that they may be infected with the virus. I'm listening to politicians fighting and blaming each other, trying to take advantage of this situation instead of fighting for the common good. I'm experiencing how fear has taken hold of people, bringing out their most selfish side. I'm observing with my own senses how, in order to fight a monster, some have become monsters. But I also see people who are offering to buy food for the most vulnerable groups. I see people supporting each other through their windows, singing and sharing words of encouragement. Doctors and nurses who have given up their off days and holidays and who take extra turns without barely resting. Assistants working really hard to take care of elders without any type of recognition. Hotels donating beds to hospitals and opening their doors for the treatment of patients and youth helping those in need in their neighborhoods. From my permitted routine walks, I'm breathing clean air and seeing clear skies such that the evening star shines extraordinarily bright in the western sky. The near absence of traffic has also revealed sounds that were hitherto drowned out for years by the roar of cars and buses. I hear blackbirds singing on Park Lane, the rustling of leaves in Hyde Park, and along the banks of the Serpentine, wild ducks and, its, and in its waters a swan. From our garden I see a vixen raising a family in tranquility such sheer bliss. Looking at these vistas, it is the beauty of nature and humanity and all the good that I see being done that is imprinted as an everlasting image on my mind. 
seeing all this has given me hope because above all the fear and uncertainty there is solidarity and kindness in people's hearts i have no doubt that we will emerge from this crisis i just hope when all this is over these beautiful feelings that are growing in people's hearts these feelings of togetherness that define the most beautiful features of humanity stay here to never go because there is still so much to do and more than ever we must stand united and be together the power to see and to listen authentically must continue while cities may slowly come back to life again there is no going back to normal and many agree that nothing will ever be the same again it is not clear though what kind of global political order will emerge in the post corona world this ordeal has the potential either to bring us closer to one another or turn us into further strangers in an increasingly estranged world the choices we make will shape not just the geopolitical system and the economy but also the state of our humanity in decades to come i have my own views on how global institutional order must change but i will express them in another format at another time suffice to say that the change is paramount and urgently needed we will need to look at it with a much larger us frame than hitherto the key will be to provide human security for us all global threats like covid-19 show that none of us is safe until all of us are safe there are no longer cultural hierarchies economic immunities or economic privileges for any region nation or country no country can fight this on its own multilateral action and solidarity may sound like a cliche but it is more urgent than ever to save lives whether in wuhan new york london or inside the refugee camps protecting the most vulnerable must be the priority we must remember and cherish our deeper humanity when we care for the elderly the sick the needy and the foreigner we after all are the keepers of our brothers and sisters and their pain and their suffering is also our own pain and suffering but this deeper humanity must spread to every street every neighborhood every city and every country if we are to defeat the virus and this war needs to be fought by all means necessary scientific economic social security religious and kindness and in fighting this war we should not lose sight of the fact that this is not about being rich or poor developed or developing but about being wise compassionate and human building higher walls may give the populists and the protectionists a few scores but cannot ensure safety and security for all the corona days will pass but political and religious leaders must lead the way to be vigilant against the viruses of xenophobia antisemitism islamophobia and other types of racism spreading in our midst every natural disaster is nature's attempt to create a new balance it is a response to what we humans are doing to the harmony of the natural order this requires an urgent and appropriate response from human kind this response cannot be just in terms of numbers statistics and charts i.e. just more of what we have been doing for several centuries this is not going to last and is not sustainable a deeper understanding is required which entails a radical reckoning and transformation of the ways in which we interact in the world with the world and a deep and urgent review of our connectedness
this. COVID-19 is a warning that we are not the masters of the universe and the world is not our property. If capitalism and consumerism continue their carnage on the world, the world will give us more viruses, pandemics and disasters. In conclusion, I want to narrate a beautiful true story of the people of your wonderful country that I was privileged to hear about and watch on video. In the city of Delhi, your capital, lived an octogenarian by the name of Sally Graham, whose heart sank as he saw the others from his village preparing to walk to it after the nationwide lockdown was announced. Sally Graham was a resident of Uttar Pradesh's Sharavasti district, some 200 kilometers from Delhi. He had had an attack of paralysis a few years back and was therefore paralyzed and unable to walk. He thought that he would be left behind to die. After all, who would want to carry along an old man at a time when there were no buses or trains and everyone might have to walk 200 kilometers or so to reach their village homes? He was wrong. Some enthusiastic youths from his village of all castes and faiths prepared a makeshift palanquin with the help of bamboo and bedsheet. Seligram was made to lie on the bedsheet and it was tied with a bamboo pole on both ends. The group that left with Seligram comprised 65 people, including women and children. They were dropped by a truck driver at a place from where the Yamuna Express starts. And from there, the group started walking carrying Seligram in the makeshift palanquin. They took turns in doing so. The group reached Lucknow five days after they left Delhi. They were resting on the highway when a senior UP IPS officer by the name of Navneet Sekera, who happened to be passing by, spotted them and stopped. He arranged food for them and also a bus to take them to Shravasti. Members of the group were heard saying, we could never have left Saligram behind in Delhi. He is from our village. We would not have been able to face others had we left him. All of them were daily wages, barely having enough to survive. The lesson from this is that humanity will prevail. The power of love will always prevail over the love of power and staying human in the days of the coronavirus is a moral test for us all. Thank you and God bless Muhammad Mercy.